Hi kids. We are going to start a new skill this week. We are going to be talking about text structure. When we look at text structure, we are looking at non-fiction texts, and there are a couple different ways that authors can organize what they write. The way they organize what they write is called text structure. They can organize what they write using a sequence structure, a description structure, a compare and contrast structure, a cause and effect structure, and a problem and solution structure. I know you've heard all of those words before. We're going to go into those each a little bit, and then we're going to focus on one of them. All right, so let's start with problem and solution. Problem and solution is just that. It is when the text is organized around a main problem and then different ways to solve that problem. Let's look at this example here. Our trash can was overflowing every day. We realized we were throwing away too much paper. Our solution was to develop a recycling program. Problem, trash overflowing. Solution, recycling, pro, um, recycling program. When you have a problem and solution text structure, you're going to see words like problem, solution, solve. Another text structure is a, is a description text structure. This is when you're reading about a topic and there are just lots of details describing that topic. So for example, most dogs make great pets. Dogs are many different sizes and colors. They have cold, wet noses and sharp toenails. Because they are so energetic, they are great at playing catch. Dogs are man's best friend. So our main topic are dogs, and we found out lots of details about dogs. We found out they have different sizes and colors. Uh, we found out about their cold, wet noses, their sharp toenails, their energetic. Some signal words we look for, for instance, in fact, for example, and characteristics. We've seen lots of texts that describe a topic. Authors can write using compare and contrast. We know when we compare and contrast, we are looking for how things are the same and how they are different. You are familiar with these signal words down here. Let's look at our example. Grandparents are so fun. Grandmas are great at cooking and snuggling. However, grandpas are experts at fishing and storytelling. They are both important members of our family. We're comparing grandmas and grandpas. How are they the same? And how are they different? The author talks about grandparents focusing on those comparisons. An author can write based upon cause and effect relationships. So you know a cause and effect is one thing makes something else happen. And you're familiar with these signal words right here. Let's look at an example. We were ready for a fun-filled day at the park. We packed our picnic, looked out the window, and sadly realized it was raining. As a result of the weather, we took games and played in the shelter house. So there's a cause and effect. The rain or the change in weather forced them to take their picnic indoors. One thing made something else happen. And the sequence, the text structure that we're going to focus on this week and the next two weeks is the sequence text structure. This is when an author writes their text based upon an order. So we're going to see things happen from like a beginning to an end. It's going to give a logical sequence of what is happening. Let's look at an example. We couldn't wait to leave our trip to Di we couldn't wait to leave for our trip to Disney World. First, we grabbed our suitcases. Next, we jumped in the car and got settled. Finally, we felt the excitement rise as we pulled onto the road. There is a clear order here. First, next, finally. We can add more signal words, such as first, second, third, before, after, during, or next. We could even use dates and times. We could say this morning, I, after lunch, I, and at dinner time, we, we could use on Monday, I went to, on Tuesday, I did, on Wednesday, we, you get the idea? Sequence is in an order, whether it's a first, second, third order, or it's a time order having to do with days of the week, 
time of the day. Um, it could even be months of the year or it could even be years. We'll take a look at some more examples like that. So let's talk a little bit more about sequence text structure because that's our focus. Authors use it to show how to do or make something or to show a series of events that happen. If you're reading about how to do something, how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, the author is going to have to use clear steps in order for you to understand what to do first, next, then, and last. If it's showing a series of events that happened, it might be by date. Um, in 1982, in 1984, in 1989. It can be called time, order, sequence, or temporal order. Those are other words we could use for sequence. So if someone said, this text is written in time order, well, time is a sequence. If somebody said this text is written in temporal order, it means it was written in a sequence. It was written in a logical progression. This structure is from a point in time to another. So whether it's a five-minute span of time or a 10-year span of time, the, the text is going to be organized from one point in time to another point in time. Dates and times are also signals for this type of text structure. When we read text structure in a sequence, these are some key questions to ask ourselves to make sure we're understanding what we read, what we are reading. What is the first event, the middle, and the last event? That helps us reorganize what we read about in our brain. How long is it from the first event to the last event? So that's showing you how big of a time frame is the author focusing on? And what does it explain? What is it talking about? When we read sequence text structure and we are organizing those thoughts to those questions, it's really helpful to use a graphic organizer. There are all sorts of sequence organizers that we could use. Here's one, first, next, then, and last. Here's one first, next, then, after that, then, and finally. Here's one that is a good one for a timeline. So if you are doing something based upon dates, we could do one date here, the next, and so forth. It shows you a clear progression. Sorry, my little girl is making a lot of noise back there. So if you hear something, it's just her. She's playing. And here's another one where we put the event that happened, and then we can put a nice description of what that event is. So if the author is talking about several events in a series, okay, we might say, okay, the event on April 1st. We could put April 1st and what happened. April 2nd and what happened and so forth. Let's take a look at a passage. I'm going to move myself off the screen here a little bit so I can read. The History of Disney World. Beginning in 1964, Walt Disney started to buy millions of dollars worth of land in Florida. Then, on November 15, 1964, Walt arrived in Florida and told the world of his plans to build an even bigger and better amusement park than Disneyland. It would be the most spectacular park in the world. When the Magic Kingdom opened in 1971, Mickey Mouse walked alongside the very first visitors to the park. Between 1971 and 1973, two million people visited Disney World. In 1982, Epcot was added to Disney World, followed by Hollywood Studios, originally named Disney MGM Studios in 1989. The newest addition to Disney World is Animal Kingdom. A zoologically themed theme park opened in 1998. Now, new shows and attractions continue to open at all of the Disney World theme parks. Whew, that was a lot of information. If you're like me, you focused on reading the words in that text and you didn't pick up on much that happened. 
if we can use the text structure, it helps us organize the ideas we read into our head. So I'm going to go back and look. I see some key words that show me a sequence of events. And I highlighted them for us. If after you read and you do exactly what, it, what I did, whoa, go back and look for the text structure. I see lots of dates throughout. I can go back and look at each of those dates to see what happened. Okay. Back in 1964, Disney, he started to buy a lot of land, millions of dollars worth of land. Okay. Later in 1964, he got to Florida and he decided to build a better amusement park. In 1971, the Magic Kingdom opened. Between 1971 and 1973, 2 million people visited Disney World. That's a lot. In 1982, hey, that's the year I was born, Epcot was added. And then Hollywood Studios was added in 1989. And then finally, in 1998, the Animal Kingdom was added. That sequence text structure just helped me understand what I read a little bit more. I now know these dates show me the different things that were added to Disney World to make it what Disney World is today. I could take it a step further. I can decide, okay. I want to organize this, this information so that I fully understand it. I want to use a graphic organizer. Well, which organizer is best? Well, there's really no right or wrong answer. You have to pick one that helps you organize something the most. I decided on this one. Because it's giving us lots of dates, I want to see it on a timeline. That will help me understand the text the most. So I take my passage and I use my highlighted dates to help me fill in my graphic organizer. So in 1964, now I'm describing what happened. Here's my date. Here's what happened. He bought lots of land. My next date on November 15th, 1964. I read what happened there. He announced his plans for the new amusement park. My next date goes in my next bubble, 1971. That's when Magic Kingdom opened. My next dates, 1971 to 1973. Popular park, 2 million people visited. My next date, right over here, as well as what happened. Epcot was added. My next date, 1989, Hollywood Studios was added. And my final date, 1998, Animal Kingdom opened. Notice I'm out of dates. That's okay. I'm not going to put anything here because I don't have anything more to add. But this timeline helps me organize the information I read about and put it in an order in my brain so that I know what happened. Key words help us decide what the text structure is. This text structure is sequence because it's sequenced in the order of dates. And then my graphic organizer helps me organize the information I read about. Let's do one more. Move myself over here. Caring for creatures. Preparing for an exotic pet is unique. First, you must do research to find an exotic pet good for your home environment. Then, you must find someone who breeds and sells the pet you are interested in. Before you buy your pet, you will need to gather the supplies you need, and many will be ordered online since regular pet stores don't carry exotic materials. Finally, before you bring your pet home, find a good supply of the unique food for your new pet food your new pet will require. Again, it's a lot of information. We don't always remember what we read about. It's okay. Use the text structure the author built in to help you figure out what you read about. This author used sequence text structure as well. 
I've got keywords: first, then, before, and finally. It helps me organize the series of events in my brain. Now, first of all, I have to think about what am I reading about. Well, my topic sentence tells me I'm reading about preparing for an exotic pet. So, in order to have an exotic pet as a pet, there are some steps you need to follow. These key words show me the order of those steps. Now, to understand more, I need to look at more than just those sequence words. I'm going to use a graphic organizer to help me. Again, there's no right or wrong answer. You need to pick the graphic organizer that's right for you. I'm not going to choose this timeline one again because there aren't dates. I need a little bit more simplistic. I'm going to choose a basic first, next, then, and last type of organizer. So I'm going to take my passage and I am going to use my keywords to fill in my organizer. First, and then I'm going to read around that keyword. If I reread around it, it explains that you need to do research on exotic pets to see what kind would be best for you. Now, notice my words don't match up here. That's okay. You could cross this out, white it out, or write a different word next to it. It's still happening in order. You can make any graphic organizer work for you. We're still going a first, then, before, and finally. Okay? So my next box, then, find a breeder who sells the pet you are interested in. After that, you need to gather the supplies you will need for your new pet. It tells us in the passage to shop online because most stores won't carry what you need. And then our last keyword, finally, get a good supply of the food you will, uh, of the food your pet, sorry about that, I see my typo, that your pet will require. By finding the keywords for the sequence text structure and then using those keywords in my graphic organizer with what happened helps me better understand what I read. Okay, that's it for today's lesson. Now it's your turn. You are going to open up your assignment in Google Classroom and follow the directions. You are going to look for some keywords yourself to help you figure out um, what keywords are used for different text structures. That's all for today. I will see you next time when we do a little bit more with text structure. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful week, kids.